live from McNeil's International Film Studios in beautiful Baja Tustin, the magnificent, brilliant, and often entertaining Mark McNeil talking about the bond market. Yay! Why, thank you, dear. The bond market. Bonds. Bonds are uh, vehicles by which corporations, government entities, and others uh, borrow money. And the characteristics of a bond are, this is like a General Motors bond. Um, there's General Motors himself. There. Um, it has a maturity date. That is, it has a coupon rate, 5% in this case, and then it has a face value of $100,000. What this means is that uh, every year, for uh, until the year uh, 2031, it will pay 5% of $100,000. That means this is a little machine that spits out $5,000 a year. That's what it does. And at the end of the period, in the year 2031, it'll spit out its $5,000 and it'll give you the $100,000 back and then it falls over dead. It's done. Uh, now, there's a relationship between the price of this bond and the interest rate yield on it. And, and that is, they're inversely related. So if the price of the bond goes up, the interest rate yield goes down. And the reason is that at the time this thing was issued, the prevailing interest payment was about 5%. <coughs> that's why it was 5%. But what if the interest rate uh, in a few years goes up to 10%? Well, how much money do you have to invest now in order to get $5,000 a year yield? And the answer is, if the prevailing interest rates are 10%, you can invest uh, $50,000. $50, if you invest $50,000 at 10%, that will pay uh, $5,000 yearly uh, payoff. And so what that means is that if the interest rates, prevailing interest rates go up to 10%, this uh, bond is less valuable. It's now only worth $50,000 or so compared to $100,000 before. So when the, when the bond yields go up, the value of the bond goes down and vice versa. Now, our textbook makes a very simple uh, bond uh, because it's simple and it's useful. It's a one-year bond that you buy at a discount. And in the, the bond, for whatever you pay for it, is worth $1,000 at the end of one year. So, what determines the price you have to pay for this $1,000 bond? It's actually a, uh, a, a bill. And uh, it's supply and demand in the bond markets. For this type of bond, there's a supply, there's a demand. There's a quantity sold each week or day or whatever the period of time is. And a price comes out of it. You have to pay $950 in this instance to buy that $1,000 bond. So what's the interest rate yield if you buy something for $950, keep it for a year, and then sell it back for $1,000? Well, you've made 50, the difference between $1,000 and 950, which is $50 is the interest payment on it, and you paid $950 to earn the $50. So 50 divided by 950 times 100 to make it the interest rate yield is 5.26%. So that's the yield. The interest rate yield is 5.26%. Now, what would happen if the supply um, decreases or the demand increases? It doesn't matter. I just have it teed up here for a bond price, the bond price to go up to $970. Well, if, if because of changing market conditions, the bond price goes up to $970, it means now, when it turns to $1,000, you will have made $30. That is the difference between what you paid for at $970 and what, what you received for it at the end of the year. That's $30. And you paid $970 to get that $30 yield times 100. This is 3.09% uh, interest yield on it. So, um, in this case, if the bond price goes up, the interest rate yield goes down. And if the bond prices were to uh, go down, the interest rate yield on it would go up. That's the inverse of nature of bond prices and bond yields. So now it's time to connect the bond markets with real GDP. And 
what we have to remember is that this is an interest rate mechanism. It, uh, it, it reflects or determines the interest rates in the economy. Uh, so, if for instance we have a bond price of $950, that's an uh, interest rate yield of 5.26%. Well, do, do interest rates affect aggregate demand? Well, the four components of aggregate demand are consumption, investment, government, and net exports. Um, if the interest rates are 5.26, a certain number of cars will be purchased, a certain number of investments will be made, etc. But what would happen if, for instance, uh, the supply of bonds increases? I predict with the enormous uh, government deficits that are happening now, the supply of bonds will increase. And when the supply of bonds increases at the old price, there's a surplus, and that causes the price of bonds to go down until they can sell the quantity that's out there this period. So when the price goes down to $930, it means that you now have a price of $930. You earn $70 at the end of a year. You've earned $70, and you paid $930 for the bond. So 70 divided by 930 times 100 yields an interest rate yield of 7.52%. Well, 7.52%, if interest rates go up, what happens to consumption spending? Well, households will buy less. They can finance less on their charge cards. They'll buy fewer houses, cars, etc. Uh, if interest rates go up, uh, consumption goes down. Investment, same thing. Fewer uh, Investments are profitable at higher interest rates. Uh, government, I'm not sure what's going to happen to government. And net exports will also go down for a mechanism I can't talk about right now. But in any case, when interest rates go up, that causes aggregate demand to shift to the left. And as a result, real GDP will decrease. So, bond prices, interest rates, real GDP. What if um, instead of the supply increasing, maybe the supply decreased or the demand increased, and we ended up with a bond price of $970? Well, in the previous uh, page here, we saw that that interest rate was 2 point something percent, 3 percent maybe, 3 percent. If, if interest rates had gone down, then aggregate demand would have shifted rightward and real GDP would have gone up. So this is a little video that attempts to explain the bond markets, what bonds are, the relationship between bond prices and interest rates. They're inversely related. When bond prices go up, interest rates go down, or vice versa. If interest rates go up, the value of the bonds goes down. Then we connect the bond markets and interest rates to real GDP. So I think that's about it. See you next time.